The Lambda Parameter and Secrets extension is a long-awaited feature, which eliminates a bunch of manual coding. So let's see what this means for our Lambda functions. So what are this extension and why is it so interesting? Well, if you have watched my previous video about how to access secrets from Secrets Manager and System Manager parameters, you may have thought it was kind of unnecessarily complicated to retrieve them. If so, then you want to watch this video. For those who don't know what Systems Manager parameters and Secrets Manager is, I would suggest watching my videos on these topics. But just to give a short introduction, if you work with serverless applications, you often rely on AWS Systems Manager Parameter Store or AWS Secrets Manager to store configuration data, secrets like API keys, database passwords, etc. Then in your Lambda function, you call these services to retrieve the values when needed. This way, you don't need to store the config and sensitive values in your function code. Now over to the new and exciting extension. In short, what the parameter and secrets extension does is to eliminate code previously needed to retrieve parameters and secrets from the AWS services parameter store and secrets manager. It also addresses an issue or irritation related to how often you need to call these services to make sure that you have the most up-to-date value if, for example, a secret should have been rotated. Before this extension, you were kind of limited to either get the value once per lifetime of your Lambda execution environment, which, as you may know, can vary a lot and is out of your control. The other alternative was to retrieve the value on each request to the Lambda function, which results in a lot of unnecessary calls to the Parameter Store and Secrets Manager service. You could of course manually circumvent this by writing additional code to just request updated values when you deem it's right, but with a serverless mentality of writing as little code as possible this is a bit counterintuitive. This illustration will hopefully give you an overview of how this works. As shown, the extension is simply a lambda layer that is added to a lambda function. The layer is called AWS Parameters and Secrets Lambda Extension and can be added to both new and existing lambda functions. When the layer is added, it provides an in-memory cache, which can persist values through the lifetime of the execution environment. It also exposes a local HTTP endpoint to the Lambda execution environment. You can then, in your Lambda function code, make an HTTP request to the local endpoint to access the in-memory cache for parameters and secrets. The extension will automatically first try to retrieve the value from its own cache. If the value is not there, or it has expired from the configured time to live, then the extension will call the respective service to retrieve the value. This will potentially reduce external API calls to these services, which in turn can reduce cost, and improve the performance of your application. Just a side note, you need to make sure that your Lambda function execution role has the right IAM permissions to access these values from Parameter Store and Secrets Manager, since the extension uses your Lambda function execution role to call these services. You may also need to add KMS permissions if you use this service to encrypt the values. Over to today's example. I will make use of the AWS console to enable the extension on a new Lambda function, which will retrieve an SSM parameter from the AWS Systems Manager parameter store. If you want to learn more about that service, go ahead and watch my video linked below.
Also, in another video, I will make an example where I use the extension to access secrets stored in AWS Secrets Manager. So, first off, open the AWS console. We need to create the SSM parameter. Go over to AWS Systems Manager and the Parameter Store. Here, click Create Parameter. Give the parameter a name. I'm going to use a standard parameter of type string and just type in some random value. Then scroll down and hit Create. Next, let's create the Lambda function. Go over to AWS Lambda, hit Create function, as we have done so many times before. I'll call my function extension and choose Python as the programming language. Then hit Create. Now that the Lambda function is created, what do we want to do? Well, for simplicity, I just want to create a function that returns the parameter stored in the parameter store. Other use cases could for example be that you wanted to call an external API, and for instance this API could require an API key. We could then have stored the API key in a systems manager parameter. This would be considered good practice, since if we later should change the API key, we don't need to update the code or configuration of the Lambda function itself. Then again, for simplicity, I will only return the parameter in my example. First off, let's import some libraries, OS and URL lib3. Next, we want to load an environment variable from the Lambda execution environment and put it into a field variable. This is the AWS session token. This is automatically set for you, so you don't need to put in any value for it when deploying your Lambda function. We also need two other field variables. One for the port, which the extension HTTP server is available on. I just call the variable port and the value is 2773. You could override the port by setting the environment variable parameters secrets extension HTTP port. I know that's a mouthful. The other field variable is to hold the parameter name. In our case, that is extension test. And since we are using the URL lib3 library, we should also initiate a pool manager. Now that we have the necessary field variables, we can write the code to call the Lambda extension. Let's create a separate Python function for that. I'll call it retrieve SSM parameter. The first thing we need is the URL. Since, as I said earlier, the Lambda extension exposes a local URL, which we can call to access the parameters and secrets. The URL is then localhost and the port variable plus slash systems manager slash parameters slash get to access parameters. Then we need to provide a query parameter called name where we provide the name of our systems manager parameter. We also need to add an HTTP header, so I'll create a Python dictionary for that containing one required header, which is the xAWS parameters secrets token, and the value, which is the AWS session token. Then we make use of the URL lib3 library to perform the get request with the URL and the header. Also remember to store the response in a variable before loading the response as a JSON object and returning it. Over to the Lambda Handler function. Create a response variable, then call our retrieve SSM parameter function. Lastly, return the parameter value. Before we continue, 
If you like my videos and want to learn more about serverless and AWS, please consider subscribing to my channel and smash that bell icon to get notified when I publish more content. Now that the code is complete, we need to add the Lambda layer for the Lambda extension. Scroll down to layers, hit add a layer, then choose AWS layers and select the one we want with the latest version. Currently, that's version 4. And lastly, hit add. With that out of the way, we need to give our Lambda function permission to retrieve the SSM parameter. This means that we need to create and attach an IAM policy to our Lambda function execution role. So open the configuration tab and under permissions, click on the execution role. Once open, hit add permission followed by create inline policy. You could also add an existing policy if you already have one with the correct access. From the service selection, search for Systems Manager. Under Actions, open the Read section and click on the checkbox for Get Parameter. Then we want to specify which parameter we can read from. This is done by opening the resource section and provide the ARN for your parameter. The ARN include the region, account ID and the parameter name. Let's now review the policy, give the policy a name and lastly create it. Go back to the Lambda function and hit deploy. It is now time to test it. Click on test. Just write some random test event since that's not important for this example. Hit save and test. Yay, we got the parameter content, meaning we successfully retrieved it from the systems manager parameter store through the Lambda extension. Since this is the first time we execute the function, the extension also called the parameter store for us. The next time the Lambda function runs, it will most likely return the cached value instead of calling the parameter store. I hope this was helpful. In a future video, I'll also show you how this is done with secrets in Secrets Manager. All that's left to say now is, until next time, Happy coding!